Hi everyone and welcome to Dragon Bites, the podcast aimed at paediatric trainees or anyone interested in child health. I'm Asim, I'm currently a paediatric trainee doctor based in Wales. This week will be the first of our coffee pod episodes where we sit down and have a nice drink and a casual chat with different people about their areas of personal interest. This episode, Stacey, one of the founders of this show, interviews Yvette Clotter, Louise Probert and Sam Thornton about how we, as trainees, can make quality improvement projects work for us. Yvette is a general paediatric consultant and local faculty lead and sounds like this. So hi, I'm Yvette. Louise and Sam are both QI support managers from the Nairon Bevan Continuous Improvement Team, also known as the ABCI. They're a team who support QI projects locally in the Anira and Bevan Health Board, but have fantastic information and loads of useful resources they can point out to us. Louise sounds like this. Hi, I'm Louise. And Sam sounds like this. Hi, I'm Sam. It's easy to be cynical about QI projects and feel like we're not really making any headway with them or that we're not going to make any difference in the long run anyway. However, the team today are going to give us some real life practical advice on how we can get going with the project, how we can follow it through to get the most most out of it for us, where we can find additional resources to make our lives easier and how no matter how difficult it seems to be, we shouldn't stop trying and should share our findings one way or another. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, I was wondering um, if you could uh, tell us why we should do a quality improvement project and what is it? Okay, Um, well quality improvement, the actual definition, is the combined and unceasing efforts of everyone to make the changes that will lead to better patient outcomes, so health, better system performance, care and better professional development. I think we would all agree that that's beneficial for our patients and the services we provide within a healthcare setting. Yes, it definitely is. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I think it's an excellent definition. I, I just like to think about things a lot more simply, maybe, and just we all come to work every day wanting to make things better and wanting to not struggle with things that aren't working. So to me, quality improvement is just ways of giving better treatment to our patients and making our days easier by taking away a lot of the stuff that we don't need in the everyday day work. Yeah, it's really focusing on those things that really matter to you, but also really matter to your patient. Um, I know when I first started thinking about quality improvement projects, and I still feel quite new to it really, um, and I've been thinking about sort of newly qualified uh, foundation doctors and things like that recently. So if, um, you know, if, they, if you are new to quality improvement projects, where's a really good place to start? Where, what, what, you know, what, what, can you, what can you do to get started? Uh, particularly with the Naira and Bevan Health Board, obviously we have the ABCI department, which is where myself and Sam work at the moment, so that would always be a good basis to start there, but I would imagine all health boards across Wales will have a quality improvement department. Go have a chat with them, I'm sure they would have resources on hand that you could um, have a look at and review, take things from there. But I think for newly qualified doctors, fresh out, straight into the system, to really understand how that system works where you, where you are, really look at it with those fresh eyes because the rest of us obviously have, have been around and a lot of it we just take for granted now and those fresh eyes really are useful to see where those problems are and they're the things that you should probably be looking at for your quality improvement work. Absolutely, I really think the foundation doctors and all our junior doctors really and the nursing staff are the eyes and ears on the ground that know what the issues are. Us dinosaur consultants <laughs> just swan in, hope that everything happens and swan out and it's, it's everyone else that needs to know what need, what we need to address something that also um iqt bronze is an online training package that's available in quite a few places so that's worth doing particularly if you want to go on to do something like iqt silver at a later stage so i recommend that most people should try and do iqt bronze it takes about an hour hour and a half would yeah you say? And it gives you that really solid framework and basic understanding of what quality improvement's all about yeah um so that that's really interesting about uh, sort of newly qualified doctors and um junior doctors and nurses and things being like the fresh eyes because mm-hmm. I think um, lots of people have said that you know and we often move around hospitals so we think see things differently in other hospitals and then we see um, 
yeah, we do just see it with fresh eyes. We just see like this is this doesn't work. They don't do that like that here. And so yeah, that is yeah. a really good place to start. Like really something that really bothers you because you're yeah. going to have a lot more sort of enthusiasm and will, aren't you, to actually do something about it if it really. You're in that you. prime place to ask the questions. Well, why are we doing it this way? Mm. You know, it might just be something you've always done. That doesn't mean that's how it should continue. Ask those questions. Challenge it. You know, those fresh eyes really are the best to be doing that. Mm. And if you have done a good project in one hospital, it's worth spreading that and scaling it out to other hospitals as well. So you can get a much bigger project. I don't know if, um, I'm sure you've heard of Link Cymru, mm-hmm. um, which is a website where all the various projects are kept. So once again, if, if you've done a successful project and someone has it on there, you can copy it from there, or you can go on there and look for projects as well that is still in its infancy it's, it's building up but the more people use it the more projects will be there as well and um, I have had a little look at Link Cymru but what, what, what is it exactly? So um, one of our trainees Miriam well I say our trainees our trainees in Wales she was never my trainee <laughs> um, I, seem, I try to own all my trainees I think but she, she started as a leadership fellow I think and she's now got funding to continue so it's a, it's a website where um people can register their projects, either the idea of the project, and then um, you can co- contact them through the, the website, or if someone has completed a project, they can put it there, and then once again, you can copy that and scale it out to, to wherever you are. Um, anybody with a NHS or doctor's org or university email address can access it. You can then change your email address, I think, afterwards. Um, but anyone, does it sound like a plug, isn't it? <laughs> Like yeah. yeah, but uh, any, anyone can use it on there then, um, to, to, and there's information about prizes and places to present your projects as well, I think. That sounds like a fantastic website, doesn't it? What a really good idea. Yeah. We talked about sort of new, when you first start, but what about people or consultants and things or registrars that have done a few quality improvement projects, but they want to improve on it a little bit more? You know, they, where, where, where can they go after sort of just starting off? It's just it's just con- continue with it. There's lots of different tools and techniques and you know ways to collect data and you know analyze data and you know you don't have to put that all of those into one project. So it's just testing out different things and, and what works for for you really and the situation that you're looking at. So um, yeah, just keep adding adding to those skills. There's a lot of different quality improvement principles and skills and techniques out there. Just have a go, see what works, yeah, what you things. enjoy, yeah, and try different things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a language to learn. Absolutely, there isn't a right or wrong method. There's no so right many right different right methodologies. Right. Yeah. It's what works for you. But there's lots of different training packages, aren't there? So, I mean, I know ABCI have quite a few good, yeah. I don't know if you want to mention some of them, maybe. So, uh, within an Iron Bevan, with the ABCI department, we have a, um, a pocket QI day, which is very basic QI principles, so that's probably for the new starters and people who are being introduced to QI, that's up and coming at the moment, we just ran our first session. Um, we also have more established programmes, so an improvement coach programme and a measurement lead programme, um, they run over four days, over a two month-ish period. And that will teach you, you know, the basics, go into a bit more detail, skills, techniques to use that you can go in and apply. Um, a measurement lead, I know Yvette's been on our recent cohort, she was actually on the same one as me, and that gave you very useful. Very useful. Um, I'm a, a geek and love the sort of spreadsheets and the ability to, to analyse things. I, yes, very interesting. if you love graphs and data and Excel, measurement lead is, uh, is the one to do. For yeah, that's great. I didn't know anything about this. Um, so you just find, you just sort of contact your department. And yeah, you can get through our internet pages. Yeah, and it's um, we are looking at amalgamating it into one um, program split over a numerous amount of n- months, and that's going to include a bit of the psychology for improvement as well. So looking at how human behaviour can affect that. So yeah, watch one of the biggest space. challenges isn't just yeah. getting your it colleagues is. on board your, with it your is. project. Yes. Yeah, that's why. That's why we thought it was important to incorporate it. So yeah, watch this space. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, for people not in ABCI, there's, there's lots of I- IQT Silver type trainings as well. I know within Wales, it's that, that at the moment it's done by specialties. So there's an IQT for anaesthetics, for paediatrics. I don't know, a few of the specialties have started doing it. I'm not sure all of the specialties that are doing it. I'm sure across the UK there's various similar projects. So if you look out for it, there's a lot there. Yeah, if you go onto the Thousand Lives website, which is the Improvement um, Committee for Wales 
and that would give you some more national program stuff. So Sam, um, I was wondering about um, how you'd go about identifying a quality improvement project. Uh, well, you, you've got to look at um, you know, the information you've got available, understanding your problem. Um, that could be various sources, so it's not limited to just this, but you know, like your patients, what they're saying, what are your, uh, what are the carers saying, the families, what are staff saying. Um, looking at the data that you've got available at hand, uh, so if you've got any places where you have uh, data that's being gathered, um, which could be like for data or, or you know, perhaps like for complaints or, or comments that you gather. Uh, you need to gain an understanding of, of your own system. Uh, you know, there's lots of tools available to understand your own system um, and the processes, such as you know the fishbone uh, diagrams, Pareto process maps, the five whys. Uh, there's lots of different tools, and like I said before, um, with like uh, more senior members of the team, that you know, there's lots of information out there. It's just a matter of exploring and um, discussing with others. Um, but yeah, to identify it, you just need to um, just gain an understanding really of the problem and then start using the theoretical framework, uh, such as the model for improvement, to help frame those questions and to build your project on. So all those tools and techniques are available on our um, Anira and Bevan internet pages for those outside of the health board and uh, the Anira and Bevan continuous improvement team. Anybody can access those. They're called skills for improvement. So Rebecca, what have you done to sort of um, identify projects in the past? What have you... Oh, I've done a number of different ones, really. I, I think I like the perfect day quite often, if you really don't know what to do and just, just think what, what would change, what would you have, and then have people put in loads of different ideas of what would improve their day for them, what would make it better, and then you start looking at which ones of those are within your sphere of control, because there's no point as an F1 coming into hospital thinking you're going to sort out the parking. That's just not <laughs> going to happen. At my level, I'm beginning to maybe possibly think of trying to do something about it. Because you need to know that it's within your control. There's no point taking on a project you don't have control of. I think if it's something that bugs you, something that's going to make your day better, you're often very much more motivated to do it. And it's more likely to be something that's bugging your colleagues as well. And so you'll get them on board a bit easier to, to try and work with you. Um, I think a process map is really important. So once you've thought of what the problem is, you've really got to map every step out so you can find out see if you can t take some of those steps out because that makes it a lot more efficient but also see which step it is that that you think you could make the biggest change to so i i, I think I'd try to think about it that way as well um and then obviously there's your ease ease benefit matrix as well so you've got to see how easy it's going to be and how much of a benefit it's going to be so i'm trying to look at but quite a big project at the moment I actually started my st second phase of my sabbatical today where i've got a few weeks to just work on quality my quality improvement project and what I did was once I had generated a few ideas, I took it to um, all the consultants and some of the senior nurses, and I think they were trainees the day as well. And then you give them a, a sort of, a, in quotations, 100 pounds, and they've got to think what they're gonna spend it on. So someone can spend all 100 pounds on one idea, or they can spend 10 pounds each on 10 different ideas, and then you add up to see which idea, which idea or two ideas got the most money, so to speak. And then that might be where to focus your energy. So there's lots of different things I've tried to use along the way. And I'm <laughs> sure there's loads more I'm going to learn about. Yeah, that's really great. I really like that perfect day thing. Because it mm. might be something that you wouldn't really think about, isn't it? But if you go through your day and what really bugs you, yeah. How many times you've got to write the names on, on a blood form that you could use stickers for? Or there's, there's various things that I know trainees have done. One of the really simple projects that one of the trainees has done was just um, having the same blood trolleys on different wards that have everything in the same place and everything you need to do your most um, frequent procedures. So being able to do a cannulation, being able to do an arterial blood gas, take blood, and just knowing that all those forms, all those bottles, everything are in the same place because you go to five different wards and everything's in five different places. I think that's the key, isn't it? It doesn't have to be something that will change the world. It can be something so small that will have such a great impact. Mm. Um, it, it you really it doesn't need to be anything major. I think that's probably my biggest word of advice. Don't go too big. Mm -hmm. Keep it small. Keep it manageable. Those those little things all add up to, to a big effect. That would make a really big difference to our lives, <laughs> wouldn't it? I mean, what she just did then is what she, she actually one of her first bits of gathering data was recording just time not recording timing how long it took a trainee um, on a ward they were blind to to do each of the procedures. 
obviously not to the actual taking of, well actually I think the blood but up to the point of where they're going to start on the patient to just see how many minutes it took them and it saved a couple of minutes per patient so if you add that up to 10 or 12 patients you're doing over a night shift that's your coffee break just there yeah. so um yeah, that was really powerful work she did um so Louise I was wondering if you could uh, have a little talk to us about sort of the different approaches to doing quality improvement projects um, from an, an IRBEV and ABCI point of view, I would say your main approach would always be follow the model for improvement. That is your robust, thorough framework. If you can answer those questions, um, you're, you're likely to get a, a greater impact and, and make a positive change. I don't know if there's any others of that that you would look at. Well, I think I, that's certainly one I found very, very useful, just sort of trying to... I know you, you had to work on me to get that aim straight in my head. <laughs> That is the one everyone struggles yeah. on. Um, but yeah, just those, you know, it's a very simple model, three questions, testing those changes. You know, it probably sounds more simple than it is to, to do in practice, but um, it's just it's just working through that constantly and answering those questions. I, I think that's probably a fail safe way to approach any quality improvement project. Yeah, so we were talking a bit a little bit earlier, weren't we, about aims? And so um, what was it exactly that we needed to... What so an aim statement has to be clear and concise. Basically, everybody on your project team needs to know exactly what we're aiming for. So you need to address your system. So whether it's going to be you're going to reduce infection rates, reduce the number of falls, um, and then by how much. So assign it a, a percentage or a number value, because that's what you, you want to be aiming towards and by when, and give yourself a target date. That's really good, isn't it, to have um, a really clear statement right at the start that everyone agrees with, because I think I've always, I've often been caught in the trap of like not really knowing what I'm doing with quality improvement projects and like, yeah, having lots of ideas and things, but yeah, having that very clear aim would yeah, really focus everybody. Your mantra, yeah. always go back to, your, to yeah. your aim statement. Is this in line with what we're trying to do? Mm. You know, stops you drifting away from it. Uh, if you had some top tips that you could give to sort of uh, some trainees or whatever, what would what would they be? Do you think? I think, like I said before, keep keep it small, keep it manageable. Make sure it's something you like you said in your scope of control. Yeah, just just keep it small. Keep testing. Keep trying things out. Don't be put off by things failing. Most projects do fail. Um, I think it's seventy percent is the is the value. A figure, but that's not a reason to give up. You need to keep testing, something will work. But then it's you just share keeping that it. Failure and as you well need to share that, learning. yeah. Yeah, you need to speak with people, share your learning, find out what's gone well elsewhere. Will it apply to you? Yeah. And, and your failures are going to help someone else because yeah. they'll, they'll realise what hasn't worked and then start working on a different idea. So it's not, you don't have to walk away from not having been successful. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think, um, you know, documenting as you're going along as well gives you a point of reference that you can go back to as well. Um, but yeah, I think one of my top tips would just be just that you're continuously learning when um, engaging in the model for improvement for any type of QI work. And, you know, if you don't reach your, your intended outcome, you're learning about the system, which is just as important. And that allows you to build on your next cycle then. It's all valuable learning. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. If I failed, I think I'd get quite disheartened by it. Yeah. And we all, we're all yeah. there. We've yeah. all been there. But then you say seventy percent of um sort of you get seventy percent failure, which is yeah, it makes you feel like it's a normal part of the process, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I like the slide you used earlier where they sort of WD forty was actually there fortieth. Exactly. 40th. You know, if you look at you know business, there's a lot of situations like that. Nothing's worked amazingly first time. I think we can all say that about things that's happened in our lives as well. Things don't always go to plan, mm -hmm. but you, you dust yourself off and you learn from it and you, you apply that into your next step. Mm -hmm. So it's so, all valuable. And it's like learning to drive. I mean, you're it certainly going to stall the car the first few times you try. You don't do anything perfectly first time. <laughs> so it's just remembering that when you're doing your project. Yeah, that WD40 really hit it home for me. Everyone yeah. loves that. So one. yeah. Um, so for, we did. We had a little forum earlier, and uh, they were talking about how WD forty. The reason why it was called WD forty it was because it, it was their fortieth attempt at getting their formula right, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that and that's quite amazing. And they named it after it, and you know it's quite an achievement then, isn't it? So yeah, we just need to keep going, don't we? Over and over and over again. Um, so that brings me um, to what would be your um, advice be to in, make it a bit more sustainable, I suppose. 
Um, particularly from a junior doctor point of view, I think one of the good things would be to get work alongside those nurses on the ward, those people that are your, you know, they're your font of knowledge, aren't they, on the wards? And, you know, even as far as, you know, your secretaries, you know, those people that are really in the system and, you know, do that job day to day, um, work with them alongside, you know, they, they'll be the ones to take that on then and, and carry that on once you've moved on. And also it's that key to keeping it small, keep it manageable. But I was also trying to find a successor, so you know, that, that's one of the aims, as you know, from our quality improvement forum that we have now, is that at the end of your time you can have an A4 sheet, a little description of what's going on, and that can be handed over to someone else. You can lay it directly with your, one of the successors coming to your department, or if there's an overlap between you and, and, and uh, um, registrar F1, because you sometimes swap at different times, get someone else on board to take it over, try link Cymru, you know, try and put it on there and, and see if someone else can take it from there. So I think it's really important not to have that all wasted. And that's why if you've used good methodologies, you've got good data and you've shown a change, then you're also going to be motivating the people you leave behind, the consultants, the nurses, to continue to run with it because they've got the data there. It's not just the wild head idea that you had, well, that, that's been just left behind again. But it's also that importance of recording it, so recording everything you've done, like we said earlier in the presentation, sorry to those who weren't there, um, operational definitions, so making sure what you're measuring is clear and somebody that you've never met can come in and take up where you've left off. Basically, don't assume that people will understand what you've done. Put it in black and white, make it as clear as day. They can just pick that up then and, and go away and do it. A bit like a recipe in a cookbook. Yeah. If you give them the list of ingredients and the method, they should be able to, to replicate it. And that's the importance of the PDSA cycles. I think prior to me understanding the model for improvement, I would try something, fail and move on, and not think of that as a PDSA cycle. That was a cycle, and my A was to abandon or maybe to, ado to, to adapt, yeah. but if I don't document those and the next person coming over is going to try those same things again, really if I've documented yeah. those little PDSA cycles and abandon, 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 oh, we'll adapt this one a bit, okay, I can adopt this one now, that just makes it a lot more clear for the next people why we're at the point we're at and they can then move on from there to improve it even further. Yeah, that's really great advice on all of you, thank you. Um, so. Um, I was wondering, uh, you know, what when we've done a quality improvement project, what sort of things can we do with it? So how can we sort, of, how can we get the most out of it for ourselves, but how can we get the most out of it, you know, for everybody else as well? Uh, from my point of view, it got me my present job. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a secretary in the general surgery department here in Iron Bevan. I did a project alongside my consultant looking at follow-up waiting times after surgery. Um, and that was just the, the tip of the iceberg for me. That's where I fell in love with quality improvement, aimed for it to be my job, here we are. Um, and my project actually... Don't you consult him because he's my project! I'm sure he does. <laughs> oh, that's such a lovely story. Um, and then I actually got shortlisted for the NHS Wales Awards as well last year. Didn't win, but still to be a finalist yeah, across absolutely. Wales was, was a massive, you know, very proud of that. So I'm sure there's all other sorts of avenues that can go down, you know, presenting posters, Absolutely. I've presented yeah, at the R&D yeah. conference, um, nationally I'm sure, there's all yeah. sorts of things out there. Yes, it's looking out for conferences, there's specific conferences for quality improvement, but also, once again, so for those not in Odara and Bevan, this isn't as applicable, but we have a quality improvement celebration day at the end of every year in June, where any projects that have been run within the health board can be presented um, to be able to share. But I think the big thing as well is not to waste that effort and to scale it, to try and find people either on other wards within your own hospital, other departments, or if it's a specialty specific thing, other hospitals as you move your rotations, go repeat that project. You know, I can remember one of our trainees, gosh, she's a consultant now, she was an F1 and then a registrar, <laughs> they all move on, but she started just with a very simple project in Neville Hall Hospital and then eventually it's become an ongoing nationwide audit that, that gets done every six months across Wales and, and so you can just take a small project to become something much bigger. Yeah, get it out there, spread, spread that knowledge. Um, and what about um, sort of um, publishing it as well, so you said about posters and presentations. 
Yeah, that is on my to-do list, is to write it up and um, put it onto the BMJ. Um, I think you can do that for free to a degree at a certain level. Don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, just, just get it out there. Which what, Whatever will take it, whoever will take it, share, share that learning. So what, what are the barriers that people can come across when they're wanting to do a quality improvement project? I think the main, main thing anyone ever says is time. It is time consuming. At the moment, it is seen as something extra to your role, but it's well worth spending that time. Well, I you think will get so much out of it. I did the Enhanced Leadership Programme with ABCI, which was 10 sessions over 12 months, and I did the Measurement Lead, which was four sessions over two months. And in all 14 of those sessions, my feedback was time, which is why I actually applied for this sabbatical, so I have time now to do it i think for all of us in medicine it's just our biggest challenge yeah yeah and that's always that's always the barrier that comes up no matter who you speak to you know time is precious and you've really got to want to be able to do it to be motivated to carry that out and like you said earlier as long as it's something that matters to you and you're really passionate you will make time for that um, i don't want to put people off who don't need no. three months to do it <laughs> you, you it's just that my yeah, my project is just too big and ambitious to exactly. fit into an hour into here and there. Keep it small, yeah. keep it Yeah, I, 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 take, I didn't take that advice yeah. very well. <laughs> but um, I think something else that's cropped up quite a bit, and I know you've had this issue of that, is um, just the lack of meaningful data out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to say a bit more about where that's been for you. For your project yeah i think it's just it's finding the right data and then knowing that that data is clean and so once again i've had to um i've learned an awful lot about how much data actually is available um on something called grape for example you, you can gather so much information about how many patients have referred who they've been referred from what they've seen what's happened to them whether they had follow-up or non-follow-up which gp practice has referred them where they've gone which postcode that there's so much that there's almost too much data and then to get the meaningful data out of that to know how to interrogate the system to get just what you need and then I had to sit and cross-reference a number of times by hand counting some of my own information until I knew I was asking the database the right questions that it was kicking out the answer that was clearly I knew was correct because I'd checked my stuff and now I'm beginning to learn how the computer thinks because some of the data you, you think you're asking a question but it only tells you what you've asked it, and you might not think that if you ask for follow-up appointments, it's only going to give the ones that, that you've given a follow-up appointment to, something else might have referred, happened to the patient, and then those are just completely lost. So I think it's you have to understand your system fully to know what there is. For some things, there's very obvious data, isn't there? If you want to look at how many, you know, MRSAs there have been on your ward, you can just get them from microbiology. So sometimes data is easy to collect, but sometimes data can be really hard to get, even if it's there, just knowing that you have the right right information. Learning to understand them. Yeah. And I think um, you say that just getting help from everybody else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Resources. So, um, yeah, yeah don't, don't hesitate to ask other people. Yeah. Don't just leave it to yourself. Yeah. Have, have a team team effort um share that out between everybody yeah it's much really more fun it's much more yeah. fun when yeah. there's a few of you doing it yeah. together yeah because if, if you were like a foundation doctor or something you perhaps you could have three of you and you all do the same project but perhaps you know in different and you can yeah you can just share it out then you can share out the sort of time doing the results and all that sort of thing can't mm -hmm. you Thank you so much, everybody, for um, coming and talking to yeah. me today. It's really, I've, I've learned a lot from this. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, I'm sure everybody else will find it really helpful as well. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Thank you. What a really interesting talk that was. I just want to say thank you to Stacey, Yvette, Louise and Sam for recording for that for us. I learned loads of things I had no idea about before. Just to keep everything fresh in our mind, let's just go over a few of the key points they mentioned. So if you're completely new to QI projects and just want to get an idea of how to get started, um, Louise mentioned um, chatting to QI departments locally. Similarly, Yvette mentioned IQT Bronze and Silver. That stands for Improving Quality Together. It's a Wales-based scheme, but if you're not from Wales, you can get hold of this stuff anyway. And it just goes through some basic teaching and training on how to get quality improvement projects launched.
Sam then went on to talk about um, how we can uh, identify useful projects to do quality improvement on. So the first thing he mentioned was getting the information we need in order to find where we need to make improvement. So that can either be from patient feedback, feedback from staff, or it could be from incidents reporting. Once you've got an idea of what you want to work on, he went on to mention about figuring out where things went wrong otherwise known as root cause analysis. And there's a number of ways you can do this. He talks about fishbone diagrams, process mapping, the five whys. That's whys as in the question, not whys as in the letter, which is what I thought it initially meant. If you go on to, and Google that, there's loads of information on all of those things. Another really useful resource from the NHS is the model for improvement, which is um, a cycle that you can use to get yourself thinking and working on a quality improvement project. One idea I really liked from Yvette was that of the perfect day. So how could you have a perfect day? What are the small things that are going wrong over the course of your day that annoy you? And are any of those things that you can work on, fix and improve for everyone else? And if you can, that's probably your QI project right there. We then got lots of advice on how we can make our projects sustainable, because there's nothing worse than doing a QI project, finding a fix, and then leaving a job and that fix disappearing in the system because you've gone. So it's important to get other staff on board, like nurses and secretaries, making sure that you've made a quick summary sheet that you can pass on to someone who can be your successor later on. And you can also think about getting your project onto a local database like Link Cymru here in Wales. And I'm sure you've got similar things in all your personal regions if you're from outside of Wales. And finally, a really important note to end things on, I think, is getting the most out of your project. So if you've gone out of your way and you've done the work, try and get a presentation out of it, either regionally, nationally or internationally. There's no reason why you can't. Just submit it to loads of different places and someone will take it. You might well be able to get a publication out of it. Loads of places do local prizes and awards for quality improvement projects. Or you might be super lucky, in Louis like in Louise's case, and get a whole job out of it. You never know. And join us next week when we're going to get back into the revision side of things. Sophie Constantinou is going to come back and give us some teaching on how to do a cardiovascular examination and give us some top tips on important findings for it for any of you who are currently revising for your MRCPCH clinical exams. That brings this episode to an end. Uh, thank you for listening to Dragon Bites. I realised yeah, when I asked you the question, oh, I shouldn't have asked that question. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I was definitely aiming for danger. Yeah, I know.